and here we are once again poetry week one for year four i hope you enjoyed reading the poems that we gave you we tried to give you give something for everybody in all those poems that we gave you so i'm just going to let you have a little look at the grid here we are handwriting grammar punctuation and spelling is as it should be as always um you'll find that you'll be able to be a little bit more um loose with the punctuation um in poetry writing uh, spelling has to be good though so does handwriting and again as always we're really going to concentrate on structural and language features so if we look at our blue structural features we're beginning to separate appropriate sections into stanzas and then our green structural features write free verse experimenting with simple forms e i.e standards that's more or less what we're going to be doing today as well if we look at the yellow as well it's, it's one step higher it says links between stanzas to develop theme line breaks and chosen form to create impact uh yeah that's good isn't it and then we've got um, language features here uh, similes and expressive language for imagery sound effects and atmosphere word choice for blue is deliberate alongside use of alliteration rhythm and rhyme um, and the yellow use surprising language and effects to influence meaning including metaphors and personification um, hopefully you've done a little bit of reminding yourself what all those things are because what we're going to do now is we are going to do some writing now on Thursday I think you've been given the task of writing a sequin uh, about an animal and I've chosen an animal here I've chosen the jellyfish because I think the jellyfishes are just the most weird creatures I find it easier to write about slightly weird things rather than like if I was going to write um, a poem about a dog I don't think I'd be able to do it because dogs are nice and dogs are fluffy and you know they're great but I think that jellyfish offer me a wider kind of use of language so I'm going to use jellyfish and what I've done is I've got together as always my adjectives my nouns and my verbs and I've got a little reminder in the top corner there about what a sequin a sequin I can't even say it sinquine is okay just just to help me with the form so we're going to go through my adjectives that I found and to give you a little top tip tip I've gone onto the internet again I'm going to show you this little this little site where is it gone I'm hoping it's there there it is it's called rhyme zone and it's a bit like the thesaurus website that i showed you yesterday and at the top you write in the word that you want i've got eater in here won't let me change it at the moment uh because i wanted some rhyming words but you can also have this drop down menu here um it says descriptive language so i've googled lots of descriptive language to do with jellyfish and that's what i i put in i didn't put eater in there i put jellyfish and i got lots of words out which was great so these are the words that i have got so i've got transparent translucent grotesque fragile frilly aquatic gelatinous umbrella shape domed and poisonous they're nice words they're adjectives they describe things and i've got some nouns here to do with the jellyfish itself obviously jellyfish is a noun i haven't written that one down i think i can remember that one tentacles ribbons alien fronds invertebrate stinging cells bell and medusa now i've written the word medusa down because it's one of the words that i googled and actually in latin i think certain jellyfish are actually called medusa or like that and of course medusa was um a creature in mythology which had lots and lots and lots of snakes for hair so i really really like that one because not only is it scientific it's also mythic so i really like that one and i've got some really good verbs here verbs are really important they really up level your writing pulsing pulsating searching floating pushing stinging 
So those are the ones I've got. There are lots of other verbs as well that I could use, but pay attention, it's got an ing at the end. Uh, we're definitely going to use that suffix. Now, going back to my grid, I don't think I'm going to concentrate on metaphors or simile today. Oh, I'm really going to concentrate on is my word choice. And I think I might have a little bit of alliteration in there as well, because I think alliteration will work well in this form of poetry. Now, let me have my first line is going to be the word itself. So that's going to be jellyfish, isn't it? Why is it? There we are. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Probably need a capital letter there. Jellyfish. Now, second line, I think I'm going to have maybe some alliteration. And alliteration is where the a phrase has the same initial sound. The same initial sound. So I can choose an adjective. And a noun, perhaps. What two ones has this? Mm. Well, there's two staring me in the face there. I'm going to have either transparent tentacles or translucent tentacles. Me, I prefer the word translucent. It's not so obvious as the word transparent. And also not all tentacles are transparent. Tentacles. You can't see that probably. Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Again, we've got the same old mouse problems that we're having. Right, I'm going to make that a bit smaller as well. Translucent tentacles, but maybe I'll do it. There we are. Let's make that a bit smaller. There we are. Translucent tentacles. So in my second line, I've just got two words. Just got two words. Jellyfish, translucent tentacles. Now my third line is going to be three words that are verbs. So I've got pulsating, pulsing, searching, floating, pushing, stinging. Hmm. Which ones go together, do you think? Uh. I think that I'm going to have... Hmm. Gonna have some more alliteration. Pushing, pulsating is a good one. That's the the way that jellyfish moves. You know, they sort of blob up and down. Pulsating. Oh, a searching. Yeah, I've got a comma in between them. Look, this probably should have a capital letter at the beginning. Pushing, pulsating, searching, and then I've got two lines again. Oh, right, I'm going to have some more alliteration. Ones that I, the word that I really like is the word frond, and I also lo really like the word fragile. Um, fragile fronds. And again, what do I need in my fourth line? I need four words, don't I? Fragile fronds, comma. So that's alliteration again. And then I'm going to have grotesque. That means very ugly and weird looking. Grotesque alien. They definitely look like aliens there. Grotesque alien. And then for my last line, I just need one word. And I think I'm going to use the word stings just as a final ending of it. And I need a full stop at the end. So I'm going to read that through. Jellyfish, translucent tentacles, pushing, pulsating, searching, fragile fronds, grotesque alien, stings. Now, I probably need a comma at the end of that line. So I'm going to put some commas at the end of this line here. So line one has one word, line two, two words, line three, three words, line four, four, four words, and then the end just have the end line has one word. I'm really happy with that. It's a very quick way to write a bit of poetry. I'm going to keep that because although it's it stands on its own, I might want to nick it next week. I might use it as a chorus or I might use some of the repeating phrases in it. 
I quite like that one. Now, we're going to go on to our next form, which is a kenning. And a kenning is filled with lots and lots of noun phrases where you're describing something, but you're not actually naming or naming it. So if I were to talk about a teacher, I'd say it might be a register taker rather than saying that it was a teacher. So I'm going to use my word bank about jellyfish again. So I'm going to write a kenning about a jellyfish. You don't have to write a kenning about the same thing that you wrote your synchrone on. You can write it on something else if you want. But I thought I've got all the words that I need uh, for jellyfish. I'm going to have a go at writing a jellyfish um, uh, kenning. So what I did first, as well as the words that I've already got, I actually watched a five minute YouTube clip on jellyfish and I wrote down a few bits and pieces to remind me about jellyfish, jellyfish even. Uh, they've got no brain, no heart, no eyes, no spine. <laughs> uh, one of the words that was used on the video clip was smooth bag. They're armed with stinging cells. They paralyze their prey. They injure humans. They're swimmers. They're stingers. They um, congregate sometimes in vast swarms on certain bits of the coast um, and can turn the sea a different colour and things like that. You have to be careful if you're going swimming. They're umbrella shaped, they, they expand and they contract. Um, they're just a big muscle really. <laughs> they're elastic, oh, they suck in water to propel themselves along and they eat plankton. So there's just a little bit of information that I've got that will be useful when I'm writing my poem. Now, I had my verbs from yesterday and because uh, kennings are all about nouns and the noun phrases, I've got my verbs from yesterday and I've changed them into nouns. So I've used the same root word, um, pulsing, pulsar, or actually it might be pulse, actually a noun is pulse, but you can also have pulsar. Stinging, so stinger. Pulsating, pulsator. Searching, searcher floating, floater, pushing, pusher. So all I've done really is taken the root word and added ER on the end to make um, them nouns because we need nouns. So I think I'm going to start writing now. I think I've got enough ideas to start. Bear with me a little bit. Now, I write this before I start writing my video and what I did first was I wrote down lots of noun phrases and then I've rearranged them. So what you're getting is the rearranged version uh, of my poem. And I've been very lucky. I've been able to rhyme some of my words. Um, but I haven't rhymed all of them. A rhyme is a really nice thing, but it's really important that it doesn't compromise your actual writing. That's what I find when children try and make their poems rhyme, they don't make sense at all. So I've got a few rhymes here. And again, you can use that um, website, uh, Rhyme Zone. Look, it says find rhymes, eater. And I've got lots and lots of words for eater. We'll go back to that in a minute. Um, yeah, we'll go back to that in a minute. So um, one of the words that I really liked um, was propeller because they propel themselves along. So I'm going to call my jellyfish jet propeller. I'm not quite sure about the spelling of that. Do you think it's an ER at the end of propeller or an OR? I'm going to check that later. I'm going to make it a bit smaller as well. I'm not doing very well today, Earful. If you were here to help me, you're always so helpful with my computer needs and things like that, my big fat sausage fingers. Right, jet propeller. Now, this is the rhyme that I'm really, really, really proud of. I hope you like it too. Jet propeller. Heart plus umbrella 
that just came to me. I was just lucky. I, that's the only rhyme that I've managed to do as well. I really like it, so I'm going to stick it in my first two lines. Jet propeller, heartless umbrella. You need, probably need a comma at the end of that line. I'm going to put one. And then water sucker, because it sucks water. So I'm going to change it around. Water sucker. Like that. And then I tried to make another rhyme with umbrella. It was very difficult. So this is really not a proper rhyme, but it is two great words. Expander. Contractor. We know what that means, do we? Expand means to get bigger, contract means to get smaller, and that's what they do. Jet propeller, heartless umbrella, water sucker, expander, contractor. So that's verse one. I've got four lines in each verse, I think. I think that's quite nice. I'm going to put a comma there. You can put in the commas afterwards if you need to. Oh, year four, if only you were here to help me. Right, now, I'm going to put a full stop at the end of that as well. And then I'm going to have a little space, and then I'm going to go on. Let's have, now, it hasn't got any eyes. And it's a bit of a muscle, so I'm going to put it as an eyeless muscle. Some... Nouns. Muscle is a noun, isn't it? Hasn't got ER on the end of it, but mo a lot do. And if you're changing verbs into nouns, you'll probably need that ER. Eyeless muscle. Ooh, fluck, chew, fluck, chew, 18, charmer, because it charms me. Light pulsator. I haven't used that word before, have I, pulsator? Not in this poem, I don't think. Light pulsator, capital letter at the beginning of the line, usually. Light pulsator, swimming, swimming. Oh, stinger. And a full stop. Jet propeller, heartless umbrella, water sucker, expander contractor. Eyeless muscle. Fluctuating charmer, light pulsator, swimming stinger. Mm, like that a great deal. All right, now one of the words that I really like is the word invertebrate. It's quite a scientific word, but I really do like it. It gives the feeling of the kind of a different world. So I know that. Um, Jellyfish don't have any brains, so I'm going to call them brainless because they are brainless. They don't have a brain. Brainless invertebrate. Brainless invertebrate. Spineless. So that sort of tap. Spineless. Ooh, Medusa. Let's use that word. I think Medusa needs a capital letter. Spineless Medusa. Plankton eater. Do you know what? Because my first two little rhyming couplets rhymed, my jet propeller and my heartless umbrella, I'd really like my last two lines to rhyme. So plankton eater. I'm going to go on my Rhyme Zone website again. Uh, plankton eater, and I've typed in the word eater, and I found rounds, um, found rhymes. So eater, it says here, beater, uh, cheetah, creature, deeter, deeter. Now, I not these these words aren't brilliant. By the word, why you need to pick and choose the ones like tweeter. So you can't rhyme quite a dark poem about a jellyfish with something that says tweets. Just not there now but there is a word that rhymes with uh eater that's not really here creature so i'm gonna rhyme eater with creature plankton eater Ooh. what adjective shall i have if <gasps> gelatinous 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 creature 
full stop at the end. Now, what I could do, because it's the end of the poem, I could I could do lots, gelatinous, grotesque, lots of adjectives, grotesque, alien creature. I wonder whether that works. Do you think that works if I put some more adjectives in that one? Brainless invertebrate, spile, spineless medusa, plankton eater, gelatinous, grotesque, alien creature. I like it. You might not like it. I like it. Let's see if it works. A uh, good way to see. Now, what's interesting about this poem is it's because of the way it's written. It's got a rhythm to it which is really nice. So hopefully your poem just naturally will have a little rhythm. It'll have a natural rhythm that you won't have even had to think about probably. So jet propeller, heartless umbrella, water sucker, expander, contractor. Eyeless muscle, fluctuating charmer, light pulsator, swimming stinger. I'm trying, year four. Come on. Ah. Brainless invertebrate, spineless medusa, plankton eater, gelatinous, grotesque, alien creature. Yeah. Interesting. I think that's a really good first um, first effort. I really like some of the words that I've used. And I, I don't know whether I like this second verse. I might really go back to that and have a little look at that. Maybe rearrange the lines, see if there's a better way that I can do it. They just seem a bit, little bit random and not enough rhythm in there. Words in themselves are great, but I, I, don't, I don't know. Really like the last line. Plankton eater, gelatinous, grotesque, alien creature. Really like that. If I go back to my structural features, I haven't used, if we're looking at language features here, I haven't used any similes, but I have created an effect and an atmosphere with just the words that I've used. And I've used alliteration, I've used rhythm, and I've used rhyme too. So I'm really happy with that. I don't think that I've hit um, this one yet. There's no metaphors or personifications really in it. Um, but actually what we're going to do probably next week, uh, year four, is concentrate on something like that. I hope you enjoyed poetry. It's one of my favourite genres to teach. And I will probably see you next week, year four. Have a good week. Bye-bye.